Hello there, welcome to Science Eyes. This is Flores Abar. Today we are going to learn about water. And um, by the time we are done with this lesson, you'll be able to know what water is. Uh, water is formed, some properties of water and sources of water. Alright, so let's begin. Now, water is made up of 70% of 70% of the earth and the rest is um, 30% recent development have found that um, water is made up of 71% of the earth uh, per percentage while 29 is um, land but of course you know, the usual one that we've all learned is the 70% or so do not worry about it you can just use the 70 percent if you are asking me as arms room now one of the properties of water is that it is colorless tasteless odorless and uh, technically water is a compound it is made up of um, two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen expressed as h2o all right now let's look at some solids of water we have the sea the lake rivers lagoons wells pipe all of these are some sources of water now let's look at some properties of water the first one that we are going to look at the physical properties of water so water is colorless tasteless odorless and it boils at 100 degrees Celsius and it freezes at 0 degrees Celsius uh, it is neutral to pH so it has a pH of 7 and it has a maximum density of 1 gram centimeters and also at 4 degrees Celsius uh, number 5 it expands when heated from negative 0 degrees Celsius and zero degrees Celsius and contracts when it when matter from zero degrees Celsius to four degrees Celsius. This is the reason why ice floats on water. Ice has a lower relative density. Is that okay? The last one that we have is water has a specific heat. It has a high specific heat. It has a high specific heat. The next one is it conducts heat more easily than any liquid except mercury. This fat causes large bodies of water like lakes, oceans to have essentially a uniform vertical temperature profile. The next one is um, eight molecules exist in liquid form over an important range of temperature from 0 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius. This range allows water molecules to exist as a liquid in most places on our planet. And it is a universal solvent that is, is able to dissolve almost most solids. Is that okay? So it is a universal solvent. We all know what the solute is and what a solvent is. So if it's a universal solvent, it's almost always able to dissolve most 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 salt now this feature also enables water to carry solvent nutrients in runoff filtration groundwater flow and living organisms water has a high surface tension in other words water is adhesive and elastic and tends to aggregate in drops rather than spread over surface as a thin film so water is elastic that is why sometimes you can see a a mosquito just standing in the water and they are not sinking is that okay you can see more insects flies yes they will just go and hang on top of water and they will not sink Water's high surface tension allows the formation of water droplets and waves and allow plants to move water and dissolve nutrients from their roots 
to the leaves the movement of blood through tiny verses in the bodies of some animals now let's look at how we can determine the boiling point of water so this is more of like an experiment so experiment to determine the boiling point of water all that we have to do is just pour water into a boiling tube now this boiling tube must be clamped is that okay put a thermometer in the water record the reading on the thermometer heat the setup for about two minutes and note how the reading on the thermometer rises as the water heats up know the temperature reading when the water begins to boil observation so what will be observed it will be observed that when the water starts to boil the temperature reading will be 100 degrees Celsius and remains so no matter how longer the water boils this shows that the boiling point of water is 100 degrees 100 degrees Celsius all right so this is a simple diagram that they've drawn here just put a uh, so we have we have this So we have this. Now there's a thermometer inside the tube. Then we heat it. Is that okay? With a boiling tube. So as the water starts to boil, this is the water. This is our thermometer. This is our thermometer here. As the water starts to boil, the readings, the readings on the thermometer will start to also rise up from the zero point. Is that okay? As the water starts to heat, the reading from the thermometer will start to rise up from the zero, 10, 20, whatever. The moment it gets to 100, the moment it gets to 100 degrees Celsius, the water will start to boil boil the water will start to boil the water will start to boil the water will start to boil will boil and no matter how if you like increase the heat increase the heat here increase the amount of fire or no matter what or how high the the the, the heat is the water or the thermometer will still the thermometer will still show the reading of what 100 degrees Celsius showing that water boils at 100 degrees Celsius so I I always give the example of people who um, perhaps have been maltreated when they were young or something like that and it gets to a point where the maltreating gets to a point where even when they um, they are about to be maltreated like they say oh no um, I don't really care anymore whatever you want to do to me just do it to me because it's more like they reach their more treating level in their life so whatever you do to them they don't really care so it's just like that people get to the stage in like that where whatever you do to them they don't really care about it anymore just like that with water what i also get to a point where it starts to boil and no matter what it will never rise up uh above the 100 degrees Celsius. all right so that's just a simple so that's just it so we have our there's a water there's a thermometer here and the water will start to boil or or heat up is that okay steam and there's a thermometer to start to rise to it gets to 100 degrees Celsius wherever the 100 degrees Celsius is when it gets there it will start to boil this shows that water boils at 100 degrees Celsius all right 
Let us move on. Now let us move on to the chemical properties of water. What is the chemical properties of water? The first chemical property of water is water reacts with metallic oxides to form alkaline solutions and hydrogen gas. Metallic oxide. So we we know we know calcium. We also know oxygen. So any metal which is having an oxygen attached to it, water will react to it to form hydrogen gas. Is that okay? Now when we get to um anyway, never mind. Um so that's just it. So any um metal which is having oxide attached to it, it will always react with water to form hydrogen gas. When we get to I was I was saying when we get to um um acid base salt, you will learn more about this. So this is the hydrogen gas that is just formed. The next point is um water reacts with non metallic oxides to form acidic solutions, for example. So this is a non metallic oxide. Sulfur is non metallic, okay? And it is having oxygen attached to it. Now whenever water reacts with it, it always forms acidic solutions. Alright. The next one is water react with metals to form metal oxide and give up hydrogen gas, for example. Water react with metal oxides to give off hydrogen gas. Is that okay? So this is just it. Now the next one we have um a hydrous white copper two tetra sulfate six react with water to form blue pentahydrate salt. Blue pentahydrate salt. And the next one is blue uh, dry blue cobalt two chloride react with water to form red or pink hexahydrate salt. So don't worry too much about it. When we get to test for water, you will know what these substances are. Test for water. Not all liquids are or contain water. And a solid substance may contain water which is not observable with the naked eye. A test for water must be used to identify water. Okay, we have a lot of liquids, but all these liquids they are not necessarily water or they don't necessarily contain water so we have to test them to see whether they are indeed water so all that we have to do is we get a drop of white and hydrous copper sulfate okay white and hydrous copper sulfate now the spot where the water droplets will fall will immediately turn blue this shows that the liquid is indeed water or it contains water so that's what they've done here they add a drop of white and hydrous copper sulfate to the water and immediately blue spot shows that the liquid is indeed water if nothing shows white it means that the liquid is not water now how do we um, test for water in a solid we put a sample of anhydrous copper sulfate on solid and the area will turn blue this shows that the liquid contains water all right so the anhydrous copper sulfate we just put it on a solid and the area will show blue and this proves that the the solid contains water so you must know that the above two tests simply proves that liquid contains water is that okay so the above two tests simply proves that it simply proves that a liquid contains water a liquid contains water in order to prove that a liquid is pure pure water use the boiling point to check that one all right 
So the first test that we said was that water. Now there's an, another test. The first one is water turns on hydros copper to sulfate to brew. There's also another test which is um water turns cobalt to chloride to pink. Alright, so these are the two tests for water to show that a liquid is indeed water or liquid contain water. The first one is anhydrous copper to sulfate. Now it is white. So the substance is white. The substance is white. White and hydros copper to sulfate. White and hydros copper to sulfate. And then it will turn into blue. And it is quite a, a reversible reaction. So when you get a blue, the blue one it contains water. If you want to turn it to become white, all you have to do is just heat it. You heat it and then all the water will uh, evaporate and then you get your white again. The next one is cobalt through chloride to pink. Alright, so let's move on.